Hi, I'm John. And I'm Megan. And this is the Vargas Venture. Where we teach you how to hack through adulthood. And in today's video, we are going to talk finances and specifically debt stacking and a strategy that we use to tackle on the mountains of student debt and other debt that we have, you know, in our house. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the strategy, we'll give you some insight as to where we are at and why we heavily rely on this strategy. So a little bit of our backstory. As you know, from our How We Met video, we met at a private Christian university. And part of going to a private Christian university is you're paying private Christian prices. Which are very, very high. Ridiculous. And we didn't have our parents pay for our schooling. We were not born into the right families for that one. <laughs> but all is well. We both came out of school with tens of thousands of dollars in debt. And it wasn't just our school loans that we had in debt, but we also were blessed by our parents with cars that came with car payments. So between car payments, student loans, we were in a very tumultuous position financially, single, and then getting married. We just combined our debt as well. But it's okay because we have this strategy that we know for a fact is going to help us get out of debt. It's working and we want to show you guys what you can do so that way you can get out of debt faster as well. So growing up, my parents did this thing called Financial Peace University. So a lot of people in the Christian world have heard about it. It's put on by this man named Dave Ramsey, and he is like this financial guru. Um, so I remember hearing my parents go through Financial Peace University. I remember hearing them talk about debt stacking, but I never really knew what it was. But then because our university is so expensive, one of the gifts they gave us at graduation was a Dave Ramsey book at graduation, knowing that all of us were in a ton of debt. I know, it's like they knew that they screwed us and in, in order <laughs> to help us, they gave us a book for This is not the book that they gave us, but this is a book that my mom gave me. They gave us that book, I read it all within like two days after graduating because debt scared me so badly. And I knew that I wanted to do it, but I just didn't know, I didn't exactly have the full motivation, like I wanted to get out of debt, but I wasn't 100% motivated quite yet to start the debt stacking. And me, I just learned about it through a financial advisor and we both we're on the same page with how we're going to go about doing this. And so, you know, we've been doing it so far. What is debt stacking and why is it so useful and something that we recommend, if, especially if you have a ton of debt? Well, basically what you do is you tackle the smallest debt. Once that's paid off, you re you you reroute the that money into the next debt and then the next one. And you're snowballing your monthly payments to get everything taken care of much faster. Now, what does that look like exactly? Uh, let's say you're in this scenario. You have, you know, you're paying $200 a month on your car, $100 a month on um, credit card bills, and $300 a month on student debt. What you're going to do is you're going to organize those loans by the size of the loan. Not the size of the monthly payment, but the size of the total amount that you owe. So let's say your credit card, you owe 1000 on it, your car you owe 5000 on it, and your student loans you owe 30000 on it. So you would write that down as your credit card is the first one you're gonna pay off, then your car, and then your student loan. So that's how you would organize it. Now, once you finish paying off the credit card, this is where the debt stacking comes into place. Most people finish paying off the loan and they're like, great, I have more money to spend on whatever. No, do not do that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take that $100 a month that you would normally spend on the credit card bill and then apply it to the next one. So in the scenario of that, or in the example that we are giving, you're gonna take that $100 a month and apply it to the... Car payment. Mm -hmm. So instead of paying $200 a month on the car, you're gonna pay $300 a month and you're gonna get ahead on that. So by the time you finish paying off your car, then you'll be paying, take that $300 you're paying on the car, add it to your student debt. And so instead of paying, <laughs> instead of paying $300 a month on your student pet, your student loans, then you'll be paying $600 a month and you'll be tackling all of your loans faster. So that's why it's called debt stacking because you're simply taking, paying it off and stacking it onto the next and the next and you're doing a 
massive snowball effect that will conquer all of your debt. And something else that you can do with debt stacking to help the process go even faster, because sometimes paying off that first loan takes forever to pay that off so you can actually see the debt stacking to start, is John and I actually have done like a lot of side jobs. So I have started tutoring and I make about $90 a month just in tutoring. We both used to do Uber and DoorDash or Uber Eats and DoorDash, which was a great way to make some extra money. And that's actually how we paid off our first loan within one month. So part of debt stacking is trying to make as much extra money as possible so you can get that first loan paid off so you can start that snowball effect. No, exactly. Building momentum is huge, especially because there is a lot of mental motivation that is required Mm -hmm. and you can feel like oh i'm paying all this money and for what it's not making a dent so you know do those side hustles to give you that extra motivation if that's what you need okay so you might be wondering how do you guys keep track of your loans all the loans that you have so that way you can figure out how to do debt snowballing or debt stacking and actually we got some free resources from dave ramsey's website that we will link down in the description box that you guys can go to. So here's an example of ours. Um, We're not showing you the numbers because it's kind of embarrassing, but also personal. But they're great resources that you can use and it's a visual representation to help with that motivation of continuing to debt stack. So we have listed out our loans from the least amount to the greatest amount. And then we can, when we pay each one off, we can cross it off. So a perfect example of this was she had one of her student loans was about, you know, in the 5,000 range. It was a little under 5,000. Yeah. So one of many student loans that we had. And so that wasn't going to be paid off until when? Uh, Nine and a half years from now. Yeah. So if we had gone based off of just paying the regular monthly payment, we would have been stuck paying that for nine years. So when we made the extra money, we were able to funnel that into this loan specifically and get it knocked out saving us a significant amount of time and money on interest especially. And so now we're taking that monthly payment and we're applying it to my car payment. Mm -hmm. So another thing that has been really, we've been really blessed with with this pandemic that a lot of people have as well is I'm sure all of you know that federal student loans have been put onto a deferment, which means that it has not accrued any interest and we do not have to pay it. So we have been taking all of our loan payments that are supposed to be due for our federal loans and putting it into our other loans that we need to get paid off. Once we paid that off, we took that payment, which was about $150 every month, and we put it onto my car payment. And then my car is actually going to be paid off within a month and a half. Which is how much earlier than anticipated? Uh, Two years. Yep. So we saved two years on car payments using the debt stacking strategy our student debt if we paid at the rate that we were going would have taken about 10 years to pay off and we're anticipating that we can get all of this done in five years or less potentially less anywhere between three and a half years to five years and that is huge right for me being a teacher and as you guys probably all know teachers don't make a ton of money and both being newly out of college for Mm -hmm. us to be able to pay off the huge amounts of loans that we have in three and a half to five years it's like kind of hard still for me to like wrap my brain around it but let me tell you the excitement that you get from one checking the little box off for that loan being paid but then getting a letter in the mail from your loan servicer or loan provider that says you no longer owe us any money is the best feeling in the whole world feels damn good (laughs) not gonna lie Anyways, it does take a lot of discipline and a lot of focus, but you know, it is something that we really want to do because down the road, we want to be able to buy a house, but no one's going to give us a loan for a house because we got a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. So this is what our goal is. And this is how we're going to get to that goal. And one way that you guys can help us get to our goal is by liking and subscribing. So that way we can reach our goal faster. One mindset that you need to make sure that you stay out of is complacency. You do not want to be okay with living in debt. One thing that John and I do every once in a while is we take our debt tracker out and just look at it and it makes us so angry that we owe this much money to other people. 
And so that motivates us to go out and do Uber Eats, to go out and do DoorDash, to do tutoring when I just feel like coming home and not seeing a kid anymore. Now, we're not angry, bitter people all the time. It's no. just a healthy motivation to, you know, get us focused and, you know, remind us why we are doing the sacrifices that we are making which is another thing it is okay to make sacrifices especially early on um you know we're fresh out of college we're not expecting to be living like kings and queens and we're gonna make certain sacrifices now that way down the road we have a little bit more options for what we can do like we could afford to live in our apartment by ourselves but we actually save a lot of money by having a roommate so anyways, we hope that this is helpful for you and would love to see you guys get out of debt because we get it. It's stressful. It can be overwhelming. It can give you anxiety. And that's just not something that you should be having for something like debt, right? Um, it can be taken on. It can be defeated. So we hope that you have learned from us uh, a tip um, as we're getting through it. And yeah, we'll give you guys updates too on how that's going so far. And um, we'd love to you know, bring you guys along on the journey there. So comment down below, what is some debt that you are struggling with? I know there are tons of people who can probably relate. Or comment down below ways that you make extra money to pay off that debt faster. Cause we would love some ideas. Yeah, so let us know your side hustles. Let us know your struggles. Struggles and side hustles. <laughs> um, and yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and Oh yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe down below, ring the notification bell, and then yeah, we will see you next time as we enter into the holidays. Well, in the meantime, adios. adios. That's a debt. <laughs>